most uh, interest rate models people use in practice are continuous time models and that's what we are uh, going to do next and uh, as i told you already the first thing historically people started to model uh, was the the short rate uh, the inter continuously compounded interest rate which is also called the short rate uh, just to remind you this was the main uh, here at the bottom of the slide the main formula we had the bond price was the expected value uh, under the pricing probability of uh, the discount factor e to the minus integral small t to capital T r of u du and therefore modeling r we can uh, get the bond prices theoretically and then we can calibrate the model to the actual mm -hmm. bond prices okay and uh, well you know short rate is not really something that you actually see uh, so it's a little bit strange um, because instead of modeling bond prices that we really do see we are modeling the short rate which we actually don't see uh, nevertheless this was this seemed the natural thing to do and was the th first thing uh, people uh, did when modeling uh, interest rates as being random processes later on we will have different models but uh, uh, right now we'll, we'll model the short rate uh, well what is it uh, strictly speaking well strictly speaking if there is a if it's a perfect market with no arbitrage but otherwise no frictions perfect market then this short rate uh, should be really the rate continuously compounded rate uh, corresponding to the risk-free assets uh, like a bank account okay or if you only have bonds in your model it would correspond to rolling over continuously very short uh, uh, maturity infinitesimal maturity bonds but the best thing is to think about it uh, as as the rate of the bank of the bank account which can be made uh, out of the bonds all right so in general that model is going to look uh, like uh, this first equation up here uh, it's going to be dr is going to be some function mu deterministic function mu of t and r t dt plus some deterministic function sigma of t r t d w t where w is brown in motion and again we are going to model this directly under the risk neutral probability so this w here is what we used to call wq but i'm not going to write wq i'm just going to write w we are modeling directly under the pricing probability all right um, typically in these models you only use one brownian motion and uh, because there is only really one uh, economic factor driving everything which is the short rate and they're called one factor models later i'll mention how in other approaches when modeling forward rates it might be natural to introduce more factors uh, however here it's natural to work with one factor and that actually is not something supported by the data there is something called principal component analysis in statistics if you apply it to bond prices data uh, you can see that there are, there are at least two or three significantly large so-called principal components which really means that you need two or three factors uh, to to fit the data well okay so this this is why later on we'll talk about other models uh, with the short rate one brown motion models usually you can't get the best fit you can't really fit the data well nevertheless uh, these models are still used both in practice and in uh, academic papers um, as uh, as the benchmark model something that's easiest to compute uh, and in academic papers even so because you only if you just want to make a distinction between what happens when the interest rate is uh, non-random versus what happens when it's random uh, then it, it may not be that important exactly which random process it is uh, it, it, uh, it's just important that it's random now for practical purposes for pricing options you, you really want something uh, as realistic as possible <laughs>